So we have some breaking news that Amy Cooper will be facing charges for falsely reporting an incident to the police in New York. If you recall Amy Cooper, she was the woman in Central Park a few weeks ago who wouldn't put her dog on a leash in the bramble part of that park where it's required. Christian Cooper, a black man who was watching the birds that day, suggested that she follow the rules very kindly. And then what she did in response was to suggest that she would call the police and say that a black man, a quote unquote African American man, was making her feel unsafe was putting her in danger knowing 100% that when she did that she was in effect putting him at risk because we all know this was around the time of George Floyd and other incidents and we've seen more since then that police do not treat everyone the same that black men that minority men in particular are often seen as automatically dangerous in the eyes of far too many police departments and the tears of white women, the cries of white women have a special resonance with police. And so I think it's good that she's been charged. This is a statement from Manhattan DA Cy Vance Jr. on incident in Central Park Ramble, May 25th, 2020. Uh, Today, our office initiated a prosecution of Amy Cooper for falsely reporting an incident in the third degree. Our office will provide the public with additional information as the case proceeds. At this time, I would like to encourage anyone who has been the target of false reporting to contact our office. We are strongly committed to holding perpetrators of this conduct accountable. Great statement, you know, short and to the point. And I agree. I agree that this is a charge that should have been laid. Now, of course, everyone in the court of law is innocent until proven guilty. And I wish that Amy Cooper gets the best defense she possibly can and is treated fairly before the court of law. And I trust she will be. But the point is, this was clearly a cynical effort by Amy Cooper to sort of weaponize the police against a black man for simply asking her to follow the rules of the area she was in that everyone has to follow. And she knew exactly what she was doing. This is why she lost her job at Franklin Templeton. This is why the social media backlash against her was so quick and nearly unanimous. She knew exactly what she was doing. And again, this wasn't an instance of somebody legitimately having this concern that they were not safe and calling the police and being mistaken. I'm sure that's happened. This was a woman who knew I'm white. He's black. I'm a nice professional white woman and he is a black man. They will not believe him and they will believe me. And I've talked about the history of that. I've talked about the history of how the Tulsa destruction that happened nearly a hundred years ago that a lot of us talked about over the last few weeks started when a white woman made a false claim against a black man. Emmett Till and so many black men throughout history, also minority men from indigenous communities, from Hispanic communities, when levied with concerns, claims by white women often have the full weight of the state of the community bear down upon them whether or not they're guilty and whether or not that force is just or whether it's proportional. We know that. We know that 100%. And Amy Cooper is not a stupid woman. She's not a dumb person. And so I think this is good to see. I'm happy this happened. I think it's a good consequence of of these actions and hopefully it's an example for all the Karen type folks like Amy Cooper who in that moment knew that she could weaponize her white femininity against a black man who was simply asking her to follow the rules and thought she could get away with it. And the thing is pre social media pre camera phones pre you know everyone being a potential journalist whistleblower with their phone she might have gotten away with it. And we also have to remember that Christian Cooper is a very sympathetic figure. A lot of people were noting that, oh, he's so well-spoken, quote unquote. And what they really are saying is that we were lucky in this case. Christian Cooper was lucky in this case that he was, you know, well-educated, eloquent. If this was a working class black person or a homeless black person or a person that has a certain affect or accent or attire, they might not have been treated as kind kindly as they were, even if the evidence was still in their favor. So this is an eternal example with an American socio-political history. 
White women have weaponized their femininity against black men, and it's good that this consequence is happening. The next time you see a Karen try to act like this, maybe she'll think otherwise, knowing that there are actual consequences for her this time. 